fan of softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello and welcome to the Fast Pitch TV show. I'm your host, Gary Leland, and I bring you this show every week. Just check our website on Fridays for new episodes. Now, if you found our show on Facebook, your Apple TV, or YouTube, or any other video sharing site or device, please check out my website, fastpitch.tv. It's the home of the Fast Pitch TV network and the place to find all my softball video channels and softball blogs. It's basically a network for Fast Pitch Softball Media. Please check it out. Now, if you're a regular viewer of this show, you know I'm a big fan of Softball Con. Softball Con is held every January in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, if you're not familiar with Softball Con, please go to their website, softballcon.net. Check it out today. I think you'll enjoy it. Now, this week I'm going to bring you part one of a great clinic with University of Kentucky Associate Head Coach Christine Himes. The title of our clinic is Don't Get Caught With Your Head in the Sand, a look at situational coaching. And I'll bring you the clinic right after a word from my sponsor. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham, you just put a cool $30 in your pocket. Okay, create your offensive strategy. And for us, it's, it's you can't just talk about it. You can't just want to be an aggressive base running team. You can't just want to be a scrappy team. You've got to figure out what that is, and you have to do it. You have to practice it. You have to execute it in the game. Know your athletes. We, one through nine, you're going to have a variety of athletes. Okay, they're all good at something, and if they're not, we have to make them good at at least one thing. Okay, and that's got to help you through your line. What is she consistent at, and how good is she under pressure? We all know we definitely have those kids who we can't. You don't let them in the box in pressure, pressure situations. You got to tell them what to do. You can't let them just just do it. What does she like to do? I definitely have athletes who do not like to bunt. I have quite a few of those, unfortunately. So I'm not going to give that to them. Okay. I also have some who don't like to hit and run. Don't know why I always like that one. I didn't have to think about it. I just swung the bat. Okay, but you have to know what they like and what they don't like and what they're very good at, what they're proficient at. Who has the green line? And this is, this is, and I will get to you later, you're going to get to early versus late in the game. As far as who has the green line, we have a few athletes on the base pass, and again, it's something we practice and it's a conversation we have with them. Megan All, Carabelle, Megan Yaki, we've got about three or four, and not now, but we're probably four right now. Early in the game, if they can pick the change up, if a ball hits the dirt, all those kinds of things, or they just feel like they can, they can beat that shortstop, they can beat the coverage to the base, they have the green light. Okay, it's not something I call, it's just something if they're comfortable and they want to go, they have that green light. That's a risk we're going to take. Okay, as we get later in the game, we can have that conversation with them. If that game's going to get close and we know what, what our pitchers are doing too to help keep us in the game, then we either shut that green light off or we just let them have it. Got it? We're either going for the mercy or somehow we're going to go for that win. Learn the tendency of your opponents, the pitcher, the catcher, the, your arm strengths, the pitch caller, defensive coverages. And I, I don't, I think it's all kind of the same at all the levels. I think it's just the intensity. We like to pick the pitcher, okay? And I think you guys can do that in high school, but I think it's a lot, a lot of the time it's not something we're looking for. We like to do it. Pitchers get different grips. They do different things. They go faster on some pitches. They slow down on some pitches. On the change that they might slow their arm down. Those kinds of things. Love to pick the pitcher. It gives your hitter an advantage, and I think as base coaches, and again, we'll get to that a little bit later, that's our job, is to put our offense in the best situation to either get on or score us runs. The catcher. Love this one, too. Okay? They're supposed to protect their pitcher, but sometimes they don't realize they're actually giving it away. It's how they set up whether you can see the, the, the signals down, okay? All those kinds of things. And that's something you have to look at when you're practicing and, and when you're scrimmaging, and even when you're just doing bullpens. You gotta try to figure out whether your pitcher or catcher are tipping those things before you get that far. Outfield, middle, infield, arm strengths. And that's primarily middle infield gets put in there because you know balls in the hole or on relays. Okay, you've gotta know too, whether they can catch an exchange, that's a part of arm strength too. Okay, they might have a great arm, but if they're going to just wind up before they do it, you just keep running. Got it? And I think, again, we forget that there has to be a clean catch, 
a clean exchange and a clean throw, and sometimes we hold those runners when we could have scored them, okay? We, and we probably push a little bit too much, and that's fair, and, and when we're up, we'll definitely do that. Um, in, the, in the video at the beginning, Karen Dill actually gets drilled in the back, and that's how close the play was, but it was close enough to score. Okay, and, and those are just the risks that you have to do until your, your, your athletes either adjust and know they're gonna slide hard and they're gonna score that run for you or we know the whole particular runner's up because they're not gonna do that. The pitch caller. I don't know how many of you call pitches. I'm going to badly assume most of you. I mean, we do at our level. Um, what do you mean? Pick, pick that pitch caller as far as their signals or whatever it is they do or their tendencies. And that's key too. A lot of pitchers aren't gonna have necessarily a lot of pitches but they are probably going to develop tendencies, and that's not always the pitcher's fault, but the pitch caller's fault. Defensive coverages. We do a lot with slapping, as far as um, we might let the second baseman have the coverage knowing we're gonna pitch that slapper so she goes to the left side. So we're gonna take away the steel coverage if there's runners on from our shortstop, okay? So we're gonna let the second base have that. So what I'll probably do is tell, tell that slapper, Crown the plate and pull something, knowing that second base is breaking. So you can hit and run, you can steal on things like that. Just things for you to pay attention. Go ahead, Molly. Have a plan. What is a plan? Hit it one more time, Molly. Oh no, not the video. Okay, what is a plan? A plan is your ability to take away the pitcher's best pitch. Okay, it's also your ability to see, or your hitter's ability, but our ability to teach them. Uh, the hitter's ability to split the plate in half. They're gonna have one side better than the other. More often than not, it's gonna be the inside, although we like to lift it down the middle, but we split it middle in or middle out. You've gotta be proficient, very proficient at one. Kind of like a basketball player who, post player, I'm not gonna shoot threes if I can, you know, stay home and just put them up. Okay, they have to understand how to split the plate in half. When, do, when to deliver the plan? Oh, the other part of the plan is, that can be included is positioning in the box and the situation. Situation or if you give them a sign to execute. Those are all part of their plan. When to deliver the plan? After we have evaluated the teams that we're playing or competing against or opponents or pitchers or all that, uh, all included, we talk to our hitters prior to the game. But then in between innings, we reaffirm that plan or we adjust to the original plan. So in between innings, we talk in, in terms of the things that we want them to remember. And I think a lot of us get caught up in talking mechanics or reminding them about the last at bats when we need to be allowing them to move on from the last at bats, helping reaffirm what we want them to focus on. Hey, this at bat, you need to just crowd the plate and drive the outside pitch. We've got to tell them what to do. Here's a secret, many of us might not know it. Women are literal, you got it? Okay, you tell us don't, and we believe it's probably for forever. Okay, it's not just for the seconds. We, we talk in a lot of terms of the focus. What should you be doing right now? Pitch selection. Okay, this is a key part, and it's even a key part as far as mechanical breakdowns. If they're not picking a good pitch, they're probably not gonna have a lot of success, okay? So we focus a lot on pitch selection. And this is, again, creating your offensive strategy. It also helps you discover about your hitter. They might tell you they like the inside pitch better, but they actually hit the outside pitch better. Got it? So this is this is key for us. So this is Molly demonstrating. Um, we're gonna, I think we're gonna hit the in right now, or we're gonna take the out as we start. Go ahead, Molly. So this is just off front toss, and it can be you or it can be another team, and it, it, it does not matter. Um, if it is another one of your players, just pitch and hide. Got to pitch and hide, but we definitely we have to remind our kids. Otherwise, we're gonna leave that hand out there and send a drill. Again, so we're hitting the in and taking the out, and this is just working on pitch selection without them panicking in their head, like what pitch am I actually looking for? So anything middle in, you're gonna drill right now. Anything middle out or more out, because anything over the way to play, you should, your athletes better wanna drive anyway. So now we're gonna hit the out and take the in. So anything middle out right now, we're gonna drive. Again, if it's too far out, we're gonna take it. Same thing, you gotta, re you gotta help them establish what the strike zone is. So anything middle in, we're taking. And it just, it helps them, and sometimes we can add to this, uh, we'll ask them to call it out, in, drive, because that's what the key is, or out, drive. So they've got to actually 
you can tell their thought process when they discover that it's a pitch they're either taking or hitting. And adding the verbal key is definitely, it was a big deal for us, and a lot of times your athletes aren't gonna like it, it's gonna, it's too split. But we just gotta practice it more because that's probably what's happening in the game live, is they're not making the decision fast enough. Go ahead, Mom. But you gotta go back for me. Okay, and I will get straight into the next one, count hitting. So I wanna quickly talk about count hitting. There's a lot of, again, this, this goes back even into the pitch colors. As far as your counts, many pitchers don't want to get behind in the count, but the question is, is what pitch are they going to get ahead with? And then that's the pitch you want to tell your athletes to drive. Okay, okay. so count hitting, uh, 1 0 0 1 0 2 um, Florida, <laughs> not so much last year, but the year before, every, uh, every 2 0 count, they were swinging. It didn't matter where the pitch was or what it was, they were swinging. So you really have to discover that both offensively and defensively, and sometimes it is to your advantage, because if the other team's not picking up on tendencies, you can just keep drilling it all day long. Quality of bats is, I don't know if this is a widely used term or not, it is something that we use with our athletes. So if they've executed a plan, whether it was a sack butt, or whether it was moving the runner from first to second, or from second to third, or scoring that runner from second, or even going 10 pitches deep in their count, it's a quality at bat. Got it? So we, we don't judge based on batting average, on base percentage, although all those things are key to running your lineups, every kid still has to have something they're good at, okay? Quality of bats is what we love to base things on. Have you heard about the great softball coaches clinic that Fast Pitch TV is hosting? They have a great lineup of speakers, including softball pitching great Kat Osterman. See all the speakers at www.fastpitch.tv slash clinic. I'm sure this clinic's going to sell out quick, so get your ticket today. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed part one of Coach Himes' clinic. Make sure and come back next week for part two of our clinic and a week after for part three. Now, if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you need to look at all the apps today that we've created for those devices. I think at this time we've created eight different apps. Uh, just go to app dot fastpitch dot tv to see them all don't forget to check out our new skills video channel at coacheslook.com it's a great way for high school players to get noticed by college coaches and best of all it's free how often do you run into something that's free and actually does something well that's all for today so until next week this is gary leland saying goodbye and thanks for watching this show is a member of the fast pitch tv network